Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're talking smooth and cardiac muscles. Throughout this chapter, we've been focusing on skeletal muscle tissue, so we're going to just real quickly go through the other two types of tissues, smooth and cardiac. Smooth muscle tissue, of course, is very thin, as it makes up things like the walls of internal organs, it makes up the walls of blood vessels. It does contain actin and myosin, just like skeletal muscles, but they're randomly arranged. And because of that random arrangement, there aren't any striations in smooth muscle, which is how we can tell under a microscope if it's smooth or skeletal. There are two types of smooth muscle tissue. The first is called a multi-unit smooth muscle. So we find these in places like our eyes and in blood vessels. Comparatively speaking, these contractions occur pretty quickly. So for instance, in the iris or the colored part of our eyes, they will change the shape of the pupil uh, to allow more or less light in. So if you've ever, say, woken up in the middle of the night and someone turned the lights on and it's kind of painful for a few seconds, that's because it will take a moment for those smooth muscles to constrict the pupil so that less light is coming into your eyes. The other type is called a visceral smooth muscle. So we find these in hollow internal organs like, for instance, your stomach and intestines. Uh, and they tend to display more rhythmic patterns in their contractions. And unlike skeletal muscle, visceral smooth muscles are able to stimulate one another. So when one area contracts, another part of the organ is relaxed, that wave of impulses will then go to the new area and cause that area to contract. So what's nice about this is you don't constantly need to have a nerve impulse going to that organ to have those smooth muscles contract. It'll just continuously contract as it moves down the organ. So how contraction works is basically the same as in skeletal muscles. So that whole sliding filament theory is about the same way. One of the differences, though, is that in skeletal muscle, we said that acetylcholine is needed. Uh, but in smooth muscle, it can also use the neurotransmitter norepinephrine as well. The whole contraction process occurs much more slowly, so it's not measured in milliseconds like we did with skeletal muscle. And another big difference between smooth and skeletal muscle is that the smooth muscle is able to stretch. So you might experience this, say, on Thanksgiving Day, right, where you overeat and your stomach expands. You can feel that stomach muscles expanding and uh, because of how much food is in there. Notice they don't tear like a skeletal muscle, if you were to overstretch a skeletal muscle, it's just going to tear. We don't see that with smooth muscle. And the last type of muscle tissue is cardiac muscle. So as the name implies, cardio refers to the heart, so we only find this in the heart. It also is made up of actin and myosin, and it is also loaded with mitochondria. Mitochondria, of course, is where the energy is going to come from to keep those muscles contracting. The last thing we want to have is fatigue setting in in our heart, because we don't say that our heart muscle is fatigued. We kind of call it a heart attack. One type of disorder that I want to kind of quickly talk about is muscular dystrophy. So muscular dystrophy is caused by a defective gene and the muscle fibers are unusually susceptible to damage. So over time the muscles become weaker and weaker and instead of being replaced by new muscle tissue it is replaced by fat or by connective tissue. So over time, muscle tissue decreases, whereas the connective tissue increases. Here you can see on the screen a normal musculature. And when we compare that with the musculature of a person with muscular dystrophy, you can see the amount of muscle tissue that is actually gone. As of right now, there is no known cure for it. But when you're talking about genetic diseases, there's always new advancements happening on a daily basis. So now you know all about the three types of muscle tissue, and I'll see you in class.